Hey everybody, uh, we're actually trying out something new. We're trying out like a micro episode mm -hmm. uh, about one specific subject. What are we going to talk about, Louis? We're going to talk about Magic the Gathering. Also, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Vince Caldera. I'm Louis Lemos. And we're going to talk about... Magic the Gathering. That's yeah. right. We actually uh, have been playing this game since we were like about 18 years old. Yeah, right? somewhere around there, yeah. So <laughs> We started playing at the wrong age. Like, we should have gotten into it when we were kids. Yeah, exactly. So we, we came in like... I mean, when we had, like, kind of a little bit of money to spend it uh, very stupidly yeah. and irresponsibly and have been playing ever since, so it's been, like, maybe six years of playing yeah. Magic the Gathering. L luckily, the format that we were playing was Commander, as opposed to something like Modern or Standard where the decks are constantly rotating. Yeah. With Commander, we would just buy singles and just sort of build up decks, and it was sort of easier for at least budgeting for us. Yeah, yeah. and for those of you who aren't really familiar with Magic the Gathering, you're probably like, well, what is that? Uh, well, Magic the Gathering was the first trading card game. It first came out on the early 90s, I think 93 specifically. Yeah, and people talk about it as the first trading card game, but it's not very much older than Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, but mm -hmm. they like to ride that wave a lot. Uh, Commander, the format that we play, is a 100-card deck, and you can't use the same card more than once. Other than basic lands. Yeah, other mm -hmm. than basic lands. Um, we tried playing for, for a little bit, and we did, and it was fun. We played with all of our friends, but we recently uh, tried something new, right? What was it? We went to a pre-release event. Oh, uh, yeah, we went to a yeah. pre-release, and that one is fun. So, just breaking down Magic the Gathering even more... They release new cards every couple months. Yeah. And this has been consistent since the early 90s. So essentially, there's such a huge card pool in Magic that you can create and customize decks really in any sort of way. And there's pretty much an endless amount of combinations you can make, which makes the game much more complicated. And we had actually been asked this question before is like, is Magic the Gathering harder than poker? And yeah. honestly, I would say, yeah, because when I was getting into Magic, one of the things that I heard was Magic is poker meets chess yeah because it's the draw of the card is so important in the game and it, it's such a huge factor and that's the randomness of it yeah but it's chess because there's also a lot of strategy once the board is being filled and you need so many like combinations and you utilize so many different cards to win i mean there are some people that win the game like in one turn like as soon as the game starts they can just yeah, so, draw so their people hand. win on just like some bullshit plays you yeah, know, yeah. Just well, i play blue black which is uh very annoying uh for some people and, and not just blue black blue black mill no, and, which means that this is specific there's a bunch of different ways you can lose a magic game the most prominent one is you bring your opponent down to less than 20 life or less zero. than to zero yeah uh or, and this is a more obscure way, if your opponent is, has no cards in their library and they go to draw a card, they automatically lose the game. Yeah. So what Vince's Mill deck does is it gets rid of all the cards in your deck. So you're seeing all the cards you would have wanted to play just go into the library or into exile until you have no cards left. All the stuff you spent like hundreds of dollars on, <laughs> I just like get it and I put it in the trash where you can't touch it. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. Or I'll try to get your best cards and then play them against you. That's how I, I usually try to And you've also play. You've invested a lot into the deck, so it is... There's a lot of very good blue-black staples, a lot of Praetors in there. Yeah. Jace the Mind Sculptor, you know, just really good blue-black cards. I like doing, like, uh, unconventional combos, too, yeah. so it's, it's pretty fun. But uh, we, like, like I said, you know, with the quarantine... Uh, we weren't really able to play very often. Yeah, you know, we played like, on the yeah. computer once, and uh, that, that was, was fun. fun. But it did, that one was a lot of like trusting the other person because it's like, hey, did you did you really draw that shit yeah, right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but we we played in person, and I feel like sometimes playing in person can be like intimidating because you don't know anybody, or like I feel might have like this assumption that the people who you're gonna play against are uh, really good, or like that they're super nerds, mm -hmm. or that they're you know gonna be like dicks or something, but. Everybody was so friendly. Yeah, it was a very nice environment. And honestly, not as many people as I thought there were going to be, which yeah. is actually, I kind of preferred. So there was a lot more time to play out your games and everyone was very cool. And I, I like that. And what made it, I guess, really, really fun for us was yeah. we're so used to playing against each other or against our friends. So you sort of know everyone's decks. But these were uh, these were specific pre-releases, which were, they give you, I think, six packs? Yeah, pre-release uh, is uh, the cards come out a week before they're all released to everybody where you can <laughs> buy them in booster packs. And when you play, I guess it's a constructed format, you uh, have six packs, and whatever you get is what you have to make in your deck. Yeah, so I, 
<laughs> we you try making the deck and then you you have an hour to build it essentially before you start playing against people. <laughs> that's not enough time sometimes. Dude, that hour flew. It was yeah. crazy how quick you had to like come up with a deck. Just like you want to crack your packs, you're like, oh, what did I get? I want to know yeah. what I have. But then you're like, oh, was this that good at all? It feels like you're taking your SAT test and you're like, I didn't come prepared, you know, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna it's, show, you know. Yeah, it's like going into the SAT test without studying and they're like, all right, you have an hour to cram. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do your best in an hour and then you're gonna show everybody how smart you are. <laughs> and we actually we ended up playing against each other in I think yeah. the second round. We we went uh, two to one. It was back and forth. Yeah. Luis won, then I won, and then uh, we had like a very uh, down to the line moment where uh, in game three, yeah. in game three, yeah. Um, and I think overall I was two and two. I lo- I won two games, lost two games. How'd you do? I was one and three. One and three. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, sometimes like I'm afraid like I'm gonna do something wrong or something, but you can't do that. But again, people were pretty good about calling plays. Mm-hmm. Um, and no one was like, oh, you can't do that. They're just like, oh, that doesn't actually work out and then you're like oh okay sorry like why would you do that (laughs) why would you hurt me like that yeah um but but it's fun because like you're playing with like really powerful cards um i got some cool cards you know you usually there's like about 15 cards in a pack sometimes you get lucky and there's like extra rares but i think oh i uh so one thing that you want to happen because this is the way magic packs work is there's 15 cards there's one rare Mm-hmm. Or ultra rare, which is essentially you know mystic rare. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's I believe like three to four uncommons, and then the rest are just common cards. And based off of that, you can sort of guess like rare cards are pretty strong, uncommons are not as strong, and uncommons are just basic Whatever, cards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's 15 of them. So one thing that you want when you're playing pre-release or even like drafts is to double up on your cards because you want multiples of the cards. That way, you have a better chance of drawing into them as you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Get lucky and drop duplicates of a card. Oh, what was the card that you like loved so much? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the card that I opened was funny because it was called uh, Cursed Artifact. <laughs> and it literally, the effect was it didn't let any creatures activate any of their abilities. Yeah. Which screws over your opponent, but also screws yourself over. Oh, and yeah. I felt like I was cursed opening up two of them. Like it, usually you're happy to open up double rares because you're like, oh, now I have a better chance of drawing him, but exactly. it was just a card that I didn't even play. <laughs> I really think that would have been a good card against that uh, one squirrel card. That uh, what, What's like the legendary squirrel creature? Uh, I forgot. It's, no, Shatterfang or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, some, the person I played against cracked it. Oh, really? You're able to create all these squirrel tokens that can like go nuts against you. Well, yeah, so my MVP... This, I, I didn't mean to say that yeah. squirrels <laughs> go nuts against you. My bad. Uh, this set specifically uh, was like prominent with squirrels, and they were releasing new squirrel cards, and they were actually very powerful. Yeah. And the MVP of my deck was a card called Chitter Spitter. <laughs> I love that. It was a three-cost artifact, two and a green, and... What it would do is, you can sac- before combat, you can sacrifice any number of tokens and put that many acorn counters on the card. Yeah. And then squirrel creatures, you get, get plus one, plus one for every single acorn counter you have on the card. But the best part was, and this is what I put into my deck, you can pay a green and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one squirrel. Mm-hmm. And in these games, creating t- creatures or tokens specifically is so, so powerful. So, yeah. And especially at such a low cost where it's just a green and I can tap it out. Yeah. So what I was doing was every time my opponent was about to end, it'd be like, before your turn ends, I'll create a new squirrel. And then I was actually creating a lot of tokens. I was able to sacrifice them to put more acre encounters yeah. to beef up my squirrels a lot. It's like a forest in there, you know, yeah. on, on your side of the battlefield. And people would just clear my board and I'm like, I can't, I lose. I can't do anything. I cleared a board like <laughs> once or twice and it felt like really cool. But then like more tokens came out for, for yeah. some folks. And I was just like, I can't do this. Yeah. I was playing red white and it was pretty fast and aggressive. Yeah. I, uh, I had a match where I was just like going back and forth, and I was like kind of like lightning bolting people with like this thing called lightning spear. So I, you sacrifice I love, it. I love red. Yeah. So we we didn't even go into that really, uh, but the the color pie essentially. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's a big thing, and Vince brought it up earlier that he was a blue black player, and it sort of identifies what he likes to do in the game because blue and black are very good at removing a lot of stuff. It's a lot of really powerful spells, but it is a control. lot of control. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what blue leans towards the most. Uh, but I, you find out how much you like red, and I love playing yeah, red. Yeah, red's super fun. Yeah. It's very aggressive, you know. It's fast. It's it's supposed to be, like, the most emotional color. Yeah. And uh, in the game, it's more about attacking your opponents direct. They're putting out stuff fast and winning the game fast. And, you know, that, that worked for a little bit, you know. And uh, we were happy to do it. I 
It was a very fun event. We hope uh, look, I've actually been getting hit up by more friends to play Magic, so yeah. it's going to be cool to sort of get our little group back together and be playing consistently. If you want to play Magic with us or something, definitely just send a comment, or we can teach you how to play Magic, or you can go to a Magic event with us. Um, I think that's kind of it for this episode, really. Yeah, this is fun to get into. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for checking this out, and have a good one.